You know, that's actually quite good. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Dormouse. Now some of you might be wondering why am I reviewing this movie? The film just premiered at Vancouver International Film Festival and I finally can cross that off of my bucket list. I've been trying to see a movie for one of these events for a long time and I do know a couple of the actors who are in this film. Now admittedly before I went and saw the film, I watched the trailer, before we went into the theater, I asked the two actors, I said, hey, just a question. There's a lot of brick vibes in this movie, am I right? And they both said that the director Director told them to watch this first. There's a lot of thematic storytelling and that neo-noir kind of ideology to the film that Brick has, but Dormouse does in its own way very well. This film follows Mouse, a failing comic book artist who works at a burlesque club who finds herself enraptured in this mystery when one of her fellow dancers goes missing. Further she goes down this rabbit hole, the more and more strings and roots that reach out, she uncovers something that is far greater than she could have probably expected. And now, while that might sound a little bit vague, it's on purpose. I'm actually encouraging you guys to see this movie. And you might not be able to see it immediately. Once it gets really going, I really suggest you do. For the story, let me just talk about the tech element because I, I do have to talk about this. This is an independent movie, so these movies are usually made for dirt nothing. Yet, the camera work, and especially the audio and especially the editing in this film is phenomenal. There's kind of a saying for filmmaking that desperation breeds creativity. Very much in situations where you don't have a lot of money, you will do what you can to make it work. Dormouse has a lot of that with its camera work. It has a lot of neo-noir shadows, but tons of color. It's very subtle to the point where you are not just drawn into how the film is being shot, but also what is around. The production design is incredibly well done. There's so much in each area that there's little stories about every place that there is in the film. And to give you an idea, again, of how good the creativity was, is that this was made during COVID, the height of it. Limitations and resources for indie films were even higher at this time. The creativity and the world building that's happening behind the actors, behind the characters in this film is so entertaining that it is almost as entertaining as the story itself. And then the sound and the editing, the sound in this film, superb, very crisp, very good, very high quality. You know, Doe, pretty girl, dumb as a rock. Must have forgot. Did you try calling her? I did nothing. I can go to our place tomorrow and check in. And that correlates into the editing, and the editing is snappy. It really delves you into the comic book ideology that this film is going on with, because as she is a failing comic book artist, and there are these scenes that transition over to comic book panels, but they work. It doesn't feel disjointed. It doesn't feel out of place. It fits with the film, not just visually, but also thematically. And the editing correlates into the pacing, which is fantastic. The director, Avon, is just does a phenomenal job with keeping you hooked to the story, hooked to the characters, hooked to the flow of the film. And then the characters and the storytelling themselves. It's very much akin to Brick, but it also borrows from different comic books, uh, notable ones I can note of from the newer noir kind of pulp fiction kind of storytelling is Edward Brubaker's work with stuff like Criminal, Killer Be Killed, The Fade Out. You're constantly intrigued into the layers that Mouse is going to uncover. And while she is removing the hidden layers, you're also really interested in what she's doing, her choices, her connections, her relationship with this guy called Ugly or her connection with Mama who runs the burlesque club, or also just how she deals with people and society in general. There are some pretty interesting conversation topics that this film brings up. It kind of makes me think of elements like Killing Them Softly. That film in its entirety is an allegory about American society, but you almost don't think that until it really comes to the end where it's quite obvious about it. This film keeps its allegories as a part of the narrative and those correlate into how the film comes to its conclusion. I will admit I am always supportive of projects that 
are made by people I know. I want to celebrate them because I have some minor standing on this website. And if I can even reference one person to see their work, I'm happy with that. It's really good. I am thoroughly impressed. Do I have any kind of negatives about it? There are maybe one or two beats that I call. There is a pretty big twist that kind of happens throughout the film. But again, because of the brick uh, comparison, and just how the story is playing out, I was able to see that quite early on. If I hadn't seen Brick, I probably wouldn't have called it, but it was only because of that reference that I was able to. That's no fault in this film. It's, you know, making reference to a really, really good independent uh, crime film. I have to say that I think Brick is one of the first independent films I ever saw. So it has a special spot for me. But in the end, what would I give Dormouse? It's a really solid film. I would highly suggest it. It is really great independent filmmaking. It's something that if you yourself are interested in, this is a very high standard, but I definitely feel that this film is better than a lot of movies that I saw last year. And I'm being genuine about that. The only kind of negative about it is that I was able to predict a few things, but also once you've seen it, it doesn't really have as much draw. Like I'll admit, I haven't seen Brick that many times in my life, but I still really enjoy it. So in the end, I'm going to give Dormouse a six out of seven. Very, very good. Normally I wouldn't rate things when it's kind of like a you know personal connection kind of film, but this is a genuine movie. Like these guys are part of the film, but the film itself as well should be commended. Anyways, guys, that's all from me. If you're able to check this film out in any capacity, please do. I really, really, really recommend it. I had a genuine fun time watching this movie. Seats were nice too, actually, in that theater. It was actually really good. Even the armrests were comfortable. I was really surprised about that. Check it out if you can. If not, keep an eye out for it. If and when a physical copy comes out, I would definitely uh, talk about that on the community page for my YouTube channel. So, you know, if you're interested keep an eye out for that i'll be buying one when it comes if you like the video leave a like and if you're interested more subscribe also tell me what you guys think about doing this in the dark shit i thought it looked kind of cool when i did the lake mungo review but i'm i'm kind of curious i don't know i realized that by bringing up imdb i did not i messed with the lighting because i went from being viewable to in the dark but i'm an idiot sometimes so anyways that's all from me guys see you guys next time